I had promised you a, an interactive segment here uh, on affordable housing. We have Willy Kimani, who is the CEO of Username Limited. Karibu sana, Bona Kimani. Asante. Now, first things first, we have seen our president, William Ruto, embark uh, on a campaign to ensure that uh, Kenyans get affordable housing. And we had affordable housing in the Big Four agenda, but it met a lot of challenges. How can we circumvent or can we go around these challenges to ensure that uh, this time round we do not have the same challenges that we have had in affordable housing? Uh, thank you for the invitation. My name is uh, Ruben Kimani, CEO of Username Investment Limited. This is a uh, a leading award-winning real estate company in Kenya and thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. Uh, I've been here before talking about the same subject. This is something that seems not to be going away. Affordable housing uh, is one of the basic needs of human beings, be it uh, shelter. And uh, this is a subject that has been there since the former president gave a half a million target uh, for affordable housing. Basically we have a huge shortage of uh, housing in Kenya. If you go to the street today, one, maybe one out of ten people you meet there will not have a house which they can call their own home. So there have been many challenges uh, in this sector, uh, just like many other uh, sectors in the economy, which I believe personally, having been in the real estate sector for some time, if you were to deal with them head on, we would solve this problem. I think I would divide them into four uh, challenges. Uh, allow me to highlight them. The first one is affordable land. That's where username investment comes in. The second one is uh, um, building materials, cost of building materials. And the third thing is financing. Most people are not able to access financing for them to be able to buy some of these houses that are in the market. Who would not like to live in Karen, for example, or Runda? Everyone would like to go there, but the reality is we can't afford it. And the last thing is about labor, and we are talking about qualified labor. If you are someone in the street right now, getting a foodie who can do a good job in your house is not a challenge. So those are like four challenges, and I believe if you are to tackle mm -hmm. them one by one, we would be able to solve this problem. Uh, uh, that's a very good answer because you've talked about even your company in regards to the same. And uh, looking at mortgage for the so many years we have been in the country, it has been quite unaffordable to many Kenyans. But the head of state in his program, he has talked about affordable housing for everyone. The money that you use for your rent could be, uh, could, could be your mortgage. And we have known quite uh, the last couple of years, and even companies have tried to bridge that gap, but they have not been able to do that. And you have highlighted some of the issues that have led to the same. The head of state did say, yes, indeed, your rent could be your, 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 your mortgage. How sustainable is it, and how can companies like Username chip in to bridge the gap that has always been there? Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges is financing, apart from affordable land, which we really try to provide. Uh, but allow me to say this before I talk about mortgage financing and uh, the challenges they are in. You'll find that most people in Kenya will go for what I would call step-by-step uh, -step development. Well, we have like 25,000 mortgages in Kenya. Most people, uh, from our experience, would like to develop their own houses. That's why they would buy, buy value-added affordable pieces of properties, land, and then start building. Because you look at uh, how much they can be able to afford in terms of their income. Most people are middle income. Our research was done, and I think we had uh, 76,000 people who earn more than 100,000. That is a very small population looking at our 50 million population. Mm -hmm. So financing is a big deal, if you ask me. And I think if you are to offer what you find in the West, other countries, these are benchmarking, you find that they can be able to afford what the president was calling single-digit lending uh, in terms of mortgages. What does that mean? If you are buying an affordable house somewhere which have been built by username investment going for 5 million shillings, you'll find that the mortgage repayments are way lower compared to the rent. What do you do as a sensible person? You'd rather own that house in the first place. But right now you'll find that for a house where you'd rent for 50,000, 
most likely you pay between 75 to 100,000 as mortgage repayment. So you'll find that most people naturally would go for renting. So if we can change that equation, I know this Kenya mortgage refinance company that mm -hmm. has been developed. I think we need to fund this organization more. And uh, if you look at Kenyans today, we also need to create awareness. If you mention about mortgage, people will tell you that that's something that I can't consider because maybe they don't have the inner details of how it works to know that it's a good thing as long as you do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And after the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of challenges came about even in the housing sector. And you will find people, and especially those uh, who have some source of income, uh, asking the big question, do I buy the plot and then build? Do I buy an already constructed house or do I opt for the mortgage? Based on what you have seen in the market trend that have been in the last couple of, uh, let's say, two or three years after COVID and during COVID, after the, the COVID, what lessons have we gotten in terms of what one can opt for? The government wants to, to construct the houses and then people can uh, move in the house and st still continue paying the mortgage. Some people opt f to buy land and build their own houses and others opt for the mortgage, just as you've, you've talked about. Uh, like I've mentioned, uh, you'll find that I would say more than 90% of the people would opt to do what we call step-by-step -step development. They buy land, they do the foundation once they get some money per DM, uh, over time, um, some small business somewhere. Then they do the main structure, then they do the roofing. Finally, some of them will even enter as they do the interior design. Because of the availability of funds, they cannot be able to access five million at once, but they can be able to access half a million over some time. That's why you'll find most people uh, go for that route. But if you find a place where I find a ready-made house, it has already completed and the mortgage financing is something that I can't afford. Look at the salary um, that we have in the employed segment. Even though those who do small businesses, the incomes they have every month. We are talking about people who earn less than 50,000. If you go to the bottom of the pyramid, the figures are even more scaring. So for me, uh, depending on your circumstances you can go for uh, either buying a ready-made house or building for those who have very good uh, pay most likely you go for a uh, completed housing you take it in a few months you are already in but allow me to also say something else that is very important before my time is over i feel uh, because affordable land is the first challenge you deal with in affordable housing i heard the government was uh, planning to provide those uh, parastatal pieces of property. Some of them are very prime government land, partner with developer, that's a good thing. But I also say, if you look at Mexico today, I read somewhere that a few years ago, like 10 years ago, they, um, they made a radius of 80 kilometers. Basically looking at 8 kilometer radius from Mexico City, that's where people are going to live. What do you do in those areas? You provide key infrastructure and you spend so much money as developers. You provide roads, sewerage, water, electricity in that radius. You can look at 20 kilometers, that's how we work at user new investment. 20 kilometer radius in other cities because the population is way well slower. Mm -hmm. Provide infrastructure, allow developers like user new investment to come and develop houses there, do value added plots, and most people, millions of them, you see the trend we have in this country. Every time you build a tarmac, what happens? Mm. The value of the land goes up because finally people can access those places, leave your house in the morning and go back in the evening in good time. Mm. So I feel that that is very important for the government to do. The government may not be able to do 250,000 houses, but mm. if they provide policies, incentives, for the majority of the business people, these are developers to do it. Millions of people will be able to access these opportunities. And that's how mm -hmm. you hit the 250,000 uh, units that the government has targeted. And maybe in 30 seconds, finally, uh, you've mentioned an institution like the Kenya re mortgage fi refinancing, Compact. mortgage refinancing, and um, how it can be able to actualize the affordable housing because if we have to actualize at least 50,000 housing units every year, we have to bring in uh, user name, we have to bring in uh, Kenya re mortgage refinancing and other corporates to ensure that uh, it's uh, affordable for Kenyans. 
Uh, I, I would like to say, uh, because I have 30 seconds, I know financing is very important, mm -hmm. but allow me also to say, uh, to touch about building materials. If we have to look at taxes that make building materials expensive, I think we didn't need to do that. Mm -hmm. We also need to look at, uh, about from that single digit lending, we also have need to look at uh, labor. The cost of labor is uh, not extremely high in Kenya, but finding someone who can do a good job is very difficult. I know we have TVETs in this country. And finally, maybe you can give developers incentives. The way, uh, of course, you have us last fund, we can have a fund for housing as well, in Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company. If I develop infrastructure because you spend a lot of money doing uh, roads, fences, gates, sewerage, uh, electricity, if you can give us incentives such that if I do them, I get some tax break. I think this is something the government can look at because we are in business to make a small profit and also to provide housing to Kenyans, shelter. If we have those intensives, intensives you'll find so many people taking them up and they'll help the government. The government doesn't need to build these houses themselves. Mm -hmm. But private developer and business people can do wonders. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Thank you so Ruben much for Kimani, for that comprehensive report. Kimani being the CEO of Username Investment Company, uh, putting into perspective matters accelerating the affordable housing. And still on the same, the head of state tomorrow will be launching uh, a project in Kibera. We'll be keeping you updated on that. Thank you so much, Kimani, for that. But we do continue with our news.